Hey y'all, it's just Rhonda. We're here for something a little different tonight. We're not reviewing anything. We're going to talk about the things that's been on my timeline, you know, conversations that have been riding by. I've been wanting to do this for a minute. Unfortunately, like I see a lot of stuff and shoot, the news be happening fast and I have to learn how to keep up. I'm new here, y'all. So anyway, like the video subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about the things that we be talking about out here on the timeline. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about women's basketball. Congrats to the WNBA ladies, you know, the, the Olympic team, Team USA. They're going for number eight, I guess. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I have not been in the loop. Not for women's basketball, not for men's basketball. Um, I be over there watching football and, you know, baseball is not my thing. But anyway, you know, I haven't been paying attention, but I am paying attention now. The conversation's gotten interesting. Now I want to see these girls play. Like I said, number eight, like you going in and you win at eight Olympics. If people weren't talking about it, then they should be talking about it. Um, shout out to Brittany Griner because, child, we was... Brittany, we was over here, whether you watch basketball or not, we was over here like, y'all bugging. Y'all better let this girl come back home. You know what I'm saying? And not only did she come back home, she went back to work. Um, and now she's, you know, on the Olympic team. And so we're happy to see that, Brittany. We're happy that you are home doing what you were supposed to be doing in first place. Apparently, Caitlin Clark thought she should be a part of the team. You know, she thought she should be on this roster. Elephant in the room is the Team USA roster. Caitlin's not on it. What was your reaction when you saw that list come out yesterday? Yeah, you know, a little disappointed, of course. You know, she's a player. Um, you know, that's that's the hardest team in the world to make, right? And that is a tough team. She's young. She's going to have so many opportunities in the future. How did you coach her up through that, or did you talk to her at all through that to make it more of a motivating factor than anything? Yeah, we, we talked actually on the bus, and she got the call on the bus, and she texted me to let me know, and, you know, I just tried to keep her spirits, and then the thing she said was, hey, coach, they woke a monster, which I thought was awesome. Why? All these women are veterans. You know what I'm saying? They got four, six, nine, 11 years in the league, and um, okay, this is why people want to hit check you, girl. Like, I feel like it's entitlement. You know what I'm saying? That's what it feels like. You're a rookie. You're supposed to come here, respect these veterans that have built these teams. Before you got here, girl, you just got here. You know what I'm saying? It's like I invite you like over to my house for the first time, and you want to go all up in my kitchen cooking. Girl, sit down for a second. These people, these ladies, have been in the league for years. This is, you know, um, being a part of the Olympic team. And I mean, and winning, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't need no help. They went over there winning seven times in a row. So it's called a team. Respect the team. The team is about building relationships. And I don't know what Kate was doing over there. I don't hear her say a whole lot, but I, you know, apparently she's a monster that's been, you know, unleashed. <laughs> don't unleash the monster, girl. Caitlin just got here and um this opportunity is going, you know, cross her again, God willing. So, you know, based on the way that people are up here, you know, exalting her, <laughs> she'd be around for a minute. Not everybody feels the same way I do. Bill Maher don't. Remember him? He got a show somewhere. I don't watch it. Anyway. He said that Caitlin Clark is the reason why everyone is paying attention to women's basketball. And I'm like, not everyone, child, not me. Women's basketball got on my radar, like everybody's, because of Caitlin Clark. And the other girls in the league are delighted for her success. I'm joking, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> hate her, and they've been... <laughs> Show the tape of her getting body checked. This is a game the other day, and she... I mean, that was pretty deliberate. And look at the other girl on her team coming over. Not... See, if this was men, they'd defend each other on their same team. I mean, men will fight from two teams, but when somebody checks you on who's on your team, you defend that guy. I'm just saying, men have their bad parts. We're toxic. We're dogs. <laughs> but 
Only women would do this. Well, women are catty, even the ones on her own team. Now, there's also a racial element to this. We can't deny that. And let, let's, I'm, I have Charlemagne on next week. I'm going to talk about it with him. So I'll, I'll get you off the hook. <laughs> but I'll just say it's not always racism when a white person succeeds. Okay. And it's not always racism when black people hip check them either. Right. Like right. it's it, no. both both are at play. No. I think it's natural well, for a megastar to come in. No. and People say I'm kind of tired of hearing it's about everything. It. It's yeah. women are catty. The league, <laughs> the league is 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 very lesbian and she's not. Um, and there's race. It's, there's a lot of going on. So according to Bill. The girls don't like her because she's not gay. And I'm like, what in the actual hell does that have to do with anything? Which girls? The girls on her team or the girls that are on the opposing team? Which girls is it that, you know, don't like her because she's not gay? He's an idiot for even bringing that shit up. And I mean, is she the only straight girl that's being targeted in the NBA? Because I feel like there's plenty of them in the NBA that are not gay. Um and if they are, so what? Like, I don't get it. Anyway. This is what he said. I thought we were over here watching them play basketball. So Caitlin got hit checked. And it's probably because she's a straight white woman. Or is because basketball is a contact sport. And if you stand your amazing ass in front of me, with all these, you know, records that you have broken. And they've actually happened. I'm not taking any of that away from her. I'm just saying, you better be ready. You know, this, these girls been here. You've been playing with college girls. It's a little different over here. You're going to have to learn that. Nobody going to give you shit. Nor should they. Women are catty. Men would never do this. You're supposed to support the person on your team. If this was a man, he would not be doing this. He would be supporting the person on his team. Yeah. So explain me this. Was that um, Caddy when Draymond Green went over there and punched Jordan Poole in face? His own teammate? What do you call that? Sportsmanship? The man way? I feel like at this point, how old is Bill Maher? He's been around for a long time. I feel like I was a child or at least in high school or something and he used to have a show that was, you know, entertaining maybe because he was, you know, supposedly keeping it real and saying shit right how it really is. But I feel like now he's saying shit from his perspective, like the truth is coming out. He gonna be probably one of them all men that walk around a nursing home just saying really disrespectful shit. Anyway, he said it's not always racism when a white person succeeds. And I'm like, what in the actual are you talking about? Nobody said that. Who said that? The thing is, I think, not I think, I know Bill Barr knows very well what racism is. Right. <laughs> You're welcome. We'd love to have you work in the fields with us. <laughs> work in the fields? That's part of that. That's... <laughs> Senator, I'm a house nigga. <laughs> Bill Maher's not the only one out here caping for Caitlin. You got your boy, Stephen A. Smith. He out here punching the air on her behalf. Now, Stephen has a different perspective. Is it different or is it exactly the same? It's interesting. Stephen thinks that Caitlyn should be there simply because she's white. You just highlighted seven straight gold medals. Oh, my God. We're really worried that they're not going to get an eighth. Oh, we really want. I mean, we got to make sure that spots one through 12, what, what, uh, every single spot that is picked. I mean, it's got to be because it's pivotal, Shannon. I don't know if you know this, Shannon. It's pivotal. I mean, they won seven straight. They might not get eight. They might not get eight. Stop it. You know good and damn well with or without Caitlin Clark, they're going to probably win the gold again. That's not what this conversation is about. This is about what I will, what I will personally label the idiocy of Team USA Women's Basketball. How dare you make this decision? It's stupid. And I'm going to tell you why it's stupid. 
I want all the ladies on this squad to know every single one of y'all are deserving of it. Caitlin Clark does not deserve a spot ahead of any of the players on this roster, okay? If we're talking just basketball, you know we're not. You know we're not. Let's harken back to the Dream Team in 1992. Remember when Christian Leitner was on that squad? Forget the yeah. other pro play. Forget the pro players. Forget the pro players. That's a given. First time NBA players were allowed to participate. Don't put that damn screen up when I'm talking right now. I want to see Shanae and Andrea, okay? <laughs> the point is this. Those rosters, right, those players were on there. Do you know that Christian Leitner also was chosen ahead of Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning. You know why? He was a two-time national champion. He was a Wooden Award winner. And he was white. Now, is that success or is that privilege? I'm just saying. Because I feel like he was saying, hey, they did it with Christian Lechner and they put him over there and nobody needed his ass. But, you know, it was a great idea because he's white. So I feel like we should do the same thing. Um, Caitlin, the people that's over here speaking on your behalf is making a fool of the situation. You should probably find some other folks. Tell these people to shut up because they're not helping. You know, and there's no surprise that Stephen A. Smith would come from this perspective and his, this would be his point of view because he'd be over there worshiping at the altar of Skip Bayless. You know, I'm a man first and it's about a core decency of appreciation. The reality is, is that no matter how problematic and he can be problematic at times, no matter how problematic he can be, the reality is, is that I wouldn't be where I am today if he didn't give me that opportunity on first take. And so for me to be where I am and to know that it, spring, it springboards off of something that he was directly involved in making happen, for me to insult him in any way is just disrespectful, it's wrong, and it's something that I would never do. Now, that don't mean I can't disagree with him. Dang, that's sad. You think you owe your whole entire success to Skip Bayless. That's wild. No matter how problematic he is. He problematic is. But I mean, hey. I feel like there's always another path. I feel like if, if your success is definitely based on you and the powers that be. And I'm sorry, I just don't feel like that Skip Bayless is the powers that be. He's definitely problematic, though. Now, Will Smith doesn't get the same grace, child, but he's not white. Apparently, the opening weekend of the Bad Boy movie had him so in his feelings and conflicted about whether he wanted to go. He had to create two videos to explain his feelings and emotions as it related to the Bad Boy movie. Like, we asked him about that. That's weird. You need to make a whole video about it. Then you had to make another one saying, sorry, not sorry. Then you over here embarrassing Chris Rock. Like, he didn't ask to be brought into this. Now you're re-traumatizing the man. When we use the word forgivable or forgiveness, that's for Chris Rock to deal with. This is his call. He could have had the man arrested that night and insisted to the LAPD that that not be the case. Could have pressed charges thereafter and insisted on not doing that to Will Smith. Not making the incident any bigger than what it was. Yes, he came out with his own flick for next fix, got about 20 million for it. After tax, he probably walked home with about six. But Chris Rock is damaged. In the day and age of mental illness or traumatic incidences that affects one's mind and psyche and what have you, yeah, you might see him at Knicks games. Yeah, you might see him still going about the business of performing on tour or doing his job or handling his business. Chris Rock will never get over that. Ever. Something like that happens and it was a blemish on all of us. Because I know how much white America reveres Will Smith. And the thinking along the lines in my mind was, hell, if he did that, what would the rest of us do? There are certain things that happen in the lives of an individual where those incidences are used as a license to castigate the rest of us. And that's what I 
I was thinking about when I said what I said Friday about being torn as to wanting to go see the movie but not wanting to see Will Smith. I wasn't encouraging anybody else not to do it. I was just saying that I was having trouble dealing with it. I'm going to go see the movie. The people said it was good. So, you know, and I've saw all the rest of them, so I might as well stay committed to the franchise. They haven't disappointed me yet. Um, you know. You know what would be a good show? I would like to see Monica McNutt and Jalen Rose do like a basketball talk type situation. I think that would be, you know, nobody asked me. I don't know. I just thought it would be good. I don't like to listen to Stephen A. Smith hollering and screaming that nonsense. We can see where you get your style from. You're just like your boy over here. Skip Bayless. He can do anything on the planet. I don't care because the whole success that I have achieved in my life, I owe it all to him. Meanwhile, Shannon's sitting there like, yep, yep, uh-huh, yep. Really? Because he was over there making a fool out of your ass. Had you hollering and screaming all up in the, your Mariah Carey octave. Are they going to be in the playoffs? Help me out. Skip. I need you to That's sit. your argument. Okay, that's I need... your argument. What do you mean that's my argument? Your argument is that they're going to be in the playoffs. Is Tom Brady playing bad? Okay. Yes or yes. no? Yes, he played poorly yesterday. What did he was... yesterday? Okay. Oh, you... yeah. But you're giving him 100% of the play? I did. Because you had... Well, that, that's question. just... You, you have no objectivity. It's just straight Brady Skip. hate. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This is just straight hate by a guy who's jealous that he's still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Skip. That's what you that's do. That's the point. That's what you do. Every time somebody, every time I call something in a question, I'm jealous. No. Skip, I did well, what I did. I never said you were jealous of Baker Mayfield. Skip, I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay, I so got three what? Super Bowls. So what? So what? He's way better than you were. I'm better way than you. Better. Skip, what I got to see what you do. You take personal shots. No, when, for I, don't, I don't take personal yeah. shots. Oh, you time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I so didn't take a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. Can I finish? You're willing to take a personal shot at me to say this man is better than me because I say he's playing bad this year? Well, because you 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 just Go ahead. you disrespect him. It's it's just so. It, so it's you would you know what? It's beneath your you dignity. You would disrespect me to no. support him. No, well, I'll, I'll support him over anybody because he's the greatest player who ever have played your it. game, and it's by have far. At it. Have at it. Okay, take off, I'm going to have at it because I'm going to have at you because. Skip Bayless is all. Tom Brady is better than you, and you're jealous. Shannon's all, I, didn't you did Club Shay Shay? So maybe you owe him, as matter, no matter how problematic he is, you owe him your success too, Shannon. Not the football part, but you know. Anyway, y'all, while we're on race, did y'all see this girl over here on the internet running her mouth? I don't know why y'all always want to be saying stuff on, you know, TikTok and stuff. Diggers? But that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass niggas. Um. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community, and it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. You're gonna call us racist. You're gonna call us potential Timothy McVeigh's. Fuck you. War. She says she upset a certain community, and I'm like, who? Because I actually had posted that video when it first came out, and I was like, nobody got mad except for, well, I won't say nobody got mad, but nobody responded except for my white friend. She was the only one that was like, piss off at your ass for being, you know, stupid. She says she did a deep dive, and she soul searched, and she could find zero fucks to give for y'all. She said what she said. What'd you call this place? Rofi of the Carolinas did. That's where she used to work. They fired that ass with the quickness. They was like, not over here. But I got a couple questions. So, who are her friends that's married to these broke-ass niggas? 
Mm-hmm. Are they black? She don't seem like she has a lot of black friends. I'm just saying. If she do, like she used to, hopefully y'all ain't still hanging around over there. Are your friends upset with you? Like your job let you go. Are your friends mad too? Because you was over here calling a uh, husband's broke ass niggas. That's what she said. I don't know her friends, but I bet they ain't black. Did this lady just get fired because she called some white man broke ass niggas? That's rich. It's the irony for me, child. Anyway. Jeannie, Mai, and Jeezy are officially divorced. Good. Now, keep this shit off the internet. Keep it to yourself. We don't want to hear it. Jeannie, that's two. You married a gangster and a cowboy. Same thing, girl. Don't you watch Yellowstone? Jesus. Stop matrimonying yourself to people. Just relax. You got your baby. I mean, she spent a whole lot of time saying that she just didn't want to ever have children. And now she got one. So maybe it was just that man that she didn't want one with. But she got one. And, you know, if this dude is over here walking around with guns and things, the best thing you can do is remove yourself from the situation. So we are so glad that, you know, that is behind you. Please take us out to group chat. Divorce people. Tiana and Iman. He wants to lower his child support payments because she uh, making more money than him. Let me see. What did this article say? Child. This is according to the neighborhood talk. Neighbors, it's no secret that Tiana Taylor and Iman Slumpert have shocked everyone after announcing that they would be divorcing after seven years of marriage. While the shock surrounded their divorce, shock seems a little strong. I don't know that we were shocked. We might have been surprised, but nobody's ever really shocked when people get divorced. But go on. While the shock surrounding their divorce announcement has calmed down, the drama involved has not. According to TNZ, Iman is now asking that his child support payments be reevaluated due to the fact that Tiana makes nearly twice as much as him. Court documents obtained by the outlet has Tiana gross monthly income before taxes at $93,885 um, dang, a month, while Iman is listed at $47,981. If you can recall in Tiana's divorce filing, she alleged that Iman was jealous of her fame despite earning more money than her due to a professional athlete in the NBA. However, considering the fact that Iman had to play basketball in the NBA since 2021, it appears that some of those earnings have withered away. Well, he better figure out what to do with it, not wither it away. Now, he's over there on the shy. I don't know that it's paying as much as the NBA, but, you know, don't wither it away. That would be tragic. Um, Iman says he's currently paying $8,000 a month in expenses for the formal couples, couples to children. He also says he's willing to pay for major medical expenses. However, it seems as he like he doesn't want his monthly payment increased and believes they should be reevaluated due to the pay gap. I mean, I don't think that's unreasonable. We're talking about people who make a hell of a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I'm not any in, I'm not anywhere near that conversation. <laughs> I feel like there's enough money for them to figure out a plan. So figure out a plan. The kids are young. You make more money than him now. So, you know, work that shit out. Remove us from the group chat. This is the silly. Between the two of y'all, y'all making more than $100,000 a month. Shut the fuck up. Please. Y'all, is Nikki okay? What is going on over here? And then one day... They're yelling, push. You're in pain. Then one day, he comes out, a beautiful baby boy, to God be the glory. In case no one's told you that, 
You're doing a great job. What the heck was she trying to bring back on that plane? Who's holding that phone? Y'all, go see about your girl. I don't know what's happening there. Church news. Who would have thought I would be over here with some church news, child? Let me get let me get my story together because the neighborhood talk, once again, is where I resource this information. So according to the neighborhood talk, Pastor Tony Evans steps down. Popular Dallas pastor Tony Evans has stepped down from the pulpit due to letting the devil use him. Damn it. Pastor Evans, who's notably built one of the largest predominantly African-American evangelical churches in the United States, issued a statement saying, the foundation of our ministry has always been our commitment to the word of God as the absolute supreme standard of truth to which we are to conform our lives. Whew, that was a mouthful. When we fall short of that standard due to sin, we are required to repent and restore our relationship with God. A number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. How many years ago, Pastor? Why are we talking about it now? You just now, sorry, it was a number of years ago and you're just now apologizing? Hmm, I'd like to see more. I feel like it's a child or something. It's going to be a child. What is it? What can it be? What can come back on you years later besides a DNA test that would have you stepping down from the pulpit and, you know, reevaluating your whole faith? Jeez. Pastor Evans didn't go into detail about what he did, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that clearly there's a story that will be breaking about him soon. Uh -huh. And it's probably going to include a DNA test. He did, however, mention that he committed no crime but did not use his righteous judgment in my actions. What the hell? He's down a healing and restoration journey. <sighs> Where do you go for a healing restoration journey? Where's that at? Hmm. Does anybody know? If you know, can you put it down in the comments? I would like to know where do I go for a healing and a restoration journey when I have committed a sin? I try not to do that, but you know, I am a sinner and I'm probably going to sin again. Yeah. Huh. You know what this reminds me of? I have sinned against you, my Lord. And I would ask that your precious blood would wash and cleanse every stain until it is in the seas of God's forgetfulness. I know I'll be pulling that one out again so fast. Shout out to Chaz. So let's end on a positive note. We're going to be back on basketball for a minute. It's a lot of talk about Miss Caitlin Clark. Some people think she's the reason why people are paying attention to women's basketball again. I just want to say there were 11 other women drafted into the NBA. What we got? I'm, I'm going to just read them up. Carmela Cardosa. She went to the Chicago Sky. J.C. Sheldon is at the Dallas Wings. Rakia Jackson, L.A. Sparks, Carla Liete, I don't really know how to say her last name. Um, she went to the Dallas Wings, Markeisha Davis, New York Liberty, Alicia Pilly, Minnesota Lynx, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, Layla, what is her last name? Huh. Layla Lacan is at the Connecticut Sun. Aaliyah Edwards, Washington Mystics, Nayadu Pooch, Atlanta Dream, Cameron Brinks is at the LA Sparks, Angel Reese is at Chicago Sky, not the Bayou Barbie from Baltimore. Can you imagine the Bayou Barbie from Baltimore? <laughs> That's a hell of a combination, I tell you. Angel was over here at the Met Gala. Hmm. 
I don't know who be out here getting whose attention, but Miss Angel Reese, she got Anna Wintour's attention. I'm into that. Ciao. That's all I got today, y'all. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I think for me, I'm going to be riding with Chicago, with Chicago. Yeah, Chicago Sky. That's where I'm going to be rocking this season. Bye, y'all.